Okay, so today we have the Phillips N4504, which we're taking apart here. We've got eight screws on the back here that we're just going to pop off here. As you can tell, it's speeded it up. I'm not really that quick. Okay, and then we're going to turn it over here. And there'll be three on the bottom that need to be removed. And then there should be five screws on the top that we're going to remove. Just to get that top plate off there. And there will be two screws on the bottom once we get the knobs off. Remember to always keep your screws in order, that way you're not trying to figure out which screw goes where. As you can see, they're nicely piled there. I'll show a little bit more on that in a moment here. And then we got a bunch of screw more screws here. And this will pop the back shell off so we can access the rear where we're going to replace the belt. Here's just a look around the, the back side. You can see that big drum in the middle there. That's where the one belt uh, will be uh, added on. We're going to have to remove uh, a couple things here. That little clip there you can see there is going to be removed at some point there. But no belt on it right now. The belt that was on it was extremely big for it. Uh, was stretched out over the years. So I had a belt from a jukebox. Once it was stretched out, it was the same size. So I decided to use uh, the belt that I replaced from uh, a jukebox on this one. See, there's the old one there. And then the one I'm going to replace it with is uh, should be here in a second. And there it is. But that one will stretch out to that size and we'll add the tension that we need to actually make it play. You can see here, everything's all nice and neat. I always do that so everything goes back where it belongs. And let's take a poke around here, looking at the old capacitors. And I do have a little bit more work to go on this unit, but today I'm just replacing the one belt just to get it back to where it's functioning and then I'll worry about the audio quality so let's take it apart here and there's a little plastic washer in the middle there on the on the drum there that you gotta watch and put that back once you're done as well and it does take a little bit of time here playing around and first I thought I'd be smart and try to reroute it but it wasn't working the way I wanted I ended up farting around more than need be here uh, I should have just directly removed the the motor up top and then put it on which I do eventually do here but at this point I'm just farting around trying to be lazy <coughs> So remember, uh, there is a clip, a little metal ring there, that holds that top motor in. Uh, yeah, it's not working the way I want. Alright, let's pull the motor out here in a minute. Pull the clip off, and here it comes. Now, how do we do this? Well, I thought I'd put it on the small one and then the big one. Well, that didn't work so well. So on to the big one here, and then we're going to pull up the belt and put it onto the other pulley here. 
I just got to make sure everything's lined up properly and where it should be. As you can tell, I end up here in a second here, mounting it in the wrong spot. So I had to pull it off and turn it the way it's supposed to be, and then putting it back on here. And that just happens. And maybe we'll take a break for a second. Oh, there we go. Now we can get the other side in. Need a pair of needle nose pliers to get that in. Spin it. Yeah, we got tension. There's that little washer I put on. And now let's reassemble this part. install now you can see a better close-up of that that clip there uh, that uh, wire that's holding it in there you can see why I needed the needle nose there to get it back in and looking at the top here and the terrible lighting which hopefully I'll fix soon enough in future projects here so you can actually see what I'm doing but belt is on the pulley there. Maybe I can get in there. There we go. You can kind of see the belt on the pulley there. Okay. So let's get it back together. This is the fun part. No testing needed. Just put it all back together and hope it works. You gotta remember that these screws are old in these machines, so sometimes you gotta be a little bit gentle with them and use a proper screwdriver. Don't try to use one that's not gonna work because you'll end up stripping it and then you're gonna have to drill it out and then find a replacement. It's a lot of bit finicky work here. Just doesn't want to go to its home. There we go. Put the bottom screws on, and then we'll put the control knobs on. And then we'll stand it up, and we'll get the back screws on, and then we'll give it a test and see how it goes from there. Please subscribe, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them below the video.